What is going on, Patriot Gardeners? It's your buddy Murdoch. And today, we're back for another fun filled adventure in the garden. And I'm going to show you how to turn this right here into this right here. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. You can even see the new little spring growth that's starting to, to come up on this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so what we have done is we have taken some seeds from an apple like this and we have stratified them, put them through a synthetic winter that we actually simulate in the refrigerator. And then we've germinated them outside of that and then placed them in some red solo cups, had them grow up a little bit and then up potted them. So I'm going to show you how we do that without further ado. Now what you're going to need to do this, obviously, is going to be an apple. Now, I'm going to say a few things about the apples before somebody else does down in the comments, because I know they will. <laughs> they, I, it's hard to resist. Just because you go to the store and you buy a Fuji or an apple, uh, what is it, a Honeycrisp or any of the other varieties that are out there, or, you know, Granny Smith, any of that stuff. Um, it doesn't mean that the seeds that you're going to germinate and grow when they turn into the little apple tree there are going to actually produce this apple. That's not what it means. What more likely happens in most cases is that the apples that you're going to produce are either going to be the mother parent plant or the father parent plant that was crossed to produce this Granny Smith or say your Fuji or your Honeycrisp or any of your other apples that are out there. Now, that's not to say that you won't get one. About I'm gonna guess about 20, 25% of the seeds that you germinate will produce a Granny Smith. And then those are good to take and you germinate those seeds and continue that and only keep the trees that produce Granny Smith and eventually, well, guess what you're gonna end up with? A true breeding Granny Smith apple. So that's how that works, and they're not going to tell you that because, well, they don't want you to have a true breeding Granny Smith apple tree. They want to have that. But I want everyone to have it. So let's show you how you do it. First, you go to the store, get you an apple. You're going to go ahead and cut about half an inch away from the core of the apple right here. Just slice across. You're going to make four cuts going around this apple, leaving just the core behind. So then you can twist opposite directions on that core and it will spill the seeds out. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take a paper towel and you're going to lay it out like y'all and you're going to take your handy dandy cinnamon and you're going to sprinkle it out on the paper towel just like I've done here. Now if you don't know about cinnamon and using it inside your garden it has many many beneficial properties to it. Um, one of the biggest is its antibacterial, antifungal properties. Uh, it doesn't harm the plants. You can actually use it for a rooting hormone uh, on certain plants, and it does kill back the uh, soil gnats quite well. So it, it really does a good job. So when you're putting seeds in and you know you're going to have a long germination period, like with cherries or apricots and stuff like that, like in our future videos we're going to be doing, you actually sprinkle this stuff on and it will help your germination, not inhibit it. And it will prevent that bad bacteria from growing in a moist, wet environment. You know, if you take a month or two to germinate some of these seeds. So after we sprinkled it out, we would sprinkle about four or five seeds on this. And we're going to go ahead and fold this up. Obviously, there's no seeds on it. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Then you're going to take a little piece of aluminum foil, and this is going to simulate darkness. And what you're going to do is just fold it up just like so. And you're going to take this, and you're going to put it in your refrigerator, in the crisper, or up, you know, where the cheese goes, up in the little door, you know, the one that has the little tiny slot that's not big enough to really hold anything. Well, now it is. And you're going to go ahead and leave these up there for a minimum of 30 days. You can pull them out after two or three weeks, but you will find that you only get about a 50% germination rate. If you leave them in there for 30 days or 45 days better, um, you're simulating that winter 
in your refrigerator uh, to get the seed to start its first stage of germination, which is cracking that seed and getting its first little taproot to pop out. So after about 30 to 45 days, I happen to have some we did on the first that were Granny Smith. So let's open this up and I will show you what we got. Yep. All right. And I will bring this up to the camera so everybody can actually get a good view and hopefully it shows up. Okay. So what we got going on here is these little tiny apple seeds have started to poke out their little tap roots. And I don't know. Let's see. Maybe it'll let me put that up here where you guys can really get a good look at that. You see that little white thing sticking out on the end? That's a root. So these guys have uh, been sitting out of the refrigerator now uh, for about two or three days. So they are ready to pop in the soil. So what's the best thing in the world that we could possibly plant those in? Well, if you guessed double red solo cup, well, my friend, you have guessed correctly. I've grown lots of different things. And I tell you what, this system of growing is really unique in the aspects of what it does for the root system, the overall plant development. It doesn't dwarf the plants. Um, you can recycle these for those that left the comments about, you know, using plastic cups. Well, almost all the pots are plastic and we can recycle these. And if it weren't full of dirt, I'd flip it upside down and show you there's already a recycling symbol on it. It probably from recycled plastic itself. So, what you'll do is you'll poke a little tiny hole. Oh, I'm going to go down about, I'd say about an inch maybe, just like that. And you're going to take one of your little germinated apple seeds, right here, and you're going to drop it right down in there. And just cover it right on up. Last thing you're going to do in loving memory of old Alabama gardener is you're going to water it well and then stand back and watch it grow. So in about, oh, a week, week and a half, blam, that's what's going to happen. And you're going to get that right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at how pretty that is. Ladies and gentlemen, I've said it on a few of my videos, but it's not a metaphorical statement that father started with a garden for a reason, because it really is the best place to teach your children to grow. This is something you can do with your family. This is something you can do with your children. This is something you can do and give these out to neighbors. I mean, how delighted would everybody be to get a little apple tree, especially in its second or third year? when it's starting to produce little apples. And in these days and times, ladies and gentlemen, food production is probably one of the most important things that I can push on folks. If you don't have a garden, you need to have a garden. If you got a backyard with some grass, you need to rip it up and you need to make arrangements to put in raised beds, in ground beds, whatever you got going, because we're in for some really, really tough times, ladies and gentlemen. And you need to buckle up and get growing. And another point I want to make is if you look, you will see all of these little seeds that I have growing here. Peas, everything. There's at least 100 cups outside on my back patio. It's not even all for me. I'm growing enough for me, for my loved ones, my friends, and my neighbors. And that's a lesson that everybody needs to put out right now. We all need to look out for each other. We're all brothers and sisters in what's going on in the world today. And we all need to stand together and really get growing. Because this is the one thing they really don't want you to be doing. Because if they control this, they control you. Remember that. I hope that this has helped. And we're actually going to be doing a couple other videos uh, growing uh, apricots, peaches. Uh, we had a suggestion in the comments 
for uh, what was it uh, cherries. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything you want to see, I definitely will throw it into the lab here and we will actually get it going. Uh, we have a few other videos coming up for in-ground peppers and things like that. So stay tuned. I thank you for all the people who have subscribed. And if you haven't, please consider doing so. It really helps me spread this message and help teach other people how to grow. I, I really don't, you know, do this for a living. I just do this to try to help everybody because I really do love you guys. And I really want everybody to make it through. I want to have a huge barbecue on the other side of everything that's going on. And everybody join hands and share all the fruits of our labor that was given to us. So, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all for joining me today. I hope you found this educational. Have a blessed Sunday. God bless. Murdoch out.